7. I'm Reba McIntyre, and I didn't mean to startle you. I just wanted to put you in the right frame of mind for today's courtroom drama, the day Karen Wollett took the stand and delivered the testimony that shook Landview. It's just one of the great One Life to Live moments we'll be sharing over the next two weeks. It was the summer of 1979, and Landview's leading citizen, Victoria Lord Riley, was standing trial for the murder of Mark O'Dane. But in a strange way, Vicki's trial took a back seat to the sensational story of today's witness, Karen Wolock. To put it simply, Karen was a housewife turned hooker, and the murder victim, Mark O'Dane, was her pimp. One of Karen's regulars was a guy by the name of Talbot Huddleston, a rich pillar of the community, and the last thing this stuffed shirt wanted was to have his name dragged through the mud. And as you are about to see, Talbot Huddleston was keeping some scandalous secrets of his own. People Magazine, Entertainment Tonight, and Soap Opera Digest named this as one of their all-time favorites. It's one of the most talked about soap shows ever. And we have it for you today here on A Daytime to Remember. Will? Hi. Uh, listen, I know I'm late, but I, I just finished taping my show. What's going on? Well, I had to come out to make some phone calls, but just before that, Paul Martin was finishing up with Karen then the D.A. could be cross-examining her right now. Yeah. She's been under such a lot of pressure. I hope she can take it. I, I just got a call from a viewer who said that she saw someone beating up Katrina Carr the other night who was tall and thin. Did you call Ed Hall about that? Yeah, just now. And the only description she gave was that he's tall and thin? Yeah, that's right. But uh, tall and thin does describe Talbot Huddleston, doesn't it? Lem? I fully intend to sue Karen Wallach for slander. Now, will you forget about Karen Wallach for just what a minute? What do you mean, forget about her? I have my good name to think of, my reputation, not to mention the image my son must have of me. Talbot, if Karen Wallach has been lying through her teeth on the witness stand, you can be sure she'll get hers. But right now, I want to know about that other woman. What other woman? The one lying in Landview Hospital in a coma, Katrina Carr. When Captain Hall questioned you yesterday, you denied knowing her. That's right. I don't know her, and I have never known her. I don't believe you. And for your information, Captain Hall didn't either. That's tough. They can't prove a thing about me and Katrina Carr. Now look, Talbot. You can do your stonewalling act in front of the police if you want to, but when you do it with me, you're just defeating your own purposes. You and I. Our old friends, remember? I happen to know your predilection for younger women. All right. So I met Katrina Carr somewhere in my travels. What does that prove? Well, it, it may not prove a damn thing, but I want to know where and under what circumstances you met her, and I want to know what, if anything, ever transpired between the two of you. Now, we have to be prepared for whatever happens when we go back into that courtroom. Well, now, Mrs. Woolick, it's difficult to decide just which part of your fascinating testimony to cover next, but I'll do my best. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Martin. Mr. Callison, we do not need your editorial comments. Yes, Your Honor, I'm sorry. Isn't it true, Mrs. Woolick, that shortly after you arrived in Landview, you were followed here by Mark O'Dane? Objection, Your Honor. The witness's relationship with Mark O'Dane is in the far distant past and certainly is irrelevant to the case. It is not in the least bit irrelevant. Now, in light of the uh, testimony the witness has just given, Mr. Martin, I'm going to overrule your objection. Witness will answer the question. Yes, it, it's true. After I came here, Marco came sh shortly thereafter to Landview. Well, that's not what I asked you, Mrs. Wolek. Isn't it true that he followed you here with the express purpose of getting even with you for what you did to him in Denver? Why 
are you so anxious about Karen? I mean, she only has to testify as to what she saw in the post office. Well, it was tough for her, Pat, to admit that she knew Mark before she came to land you. I'm sure Larry will understand that. I mean, she's only trying to help Vicky. Let's hope that Larry feels the same way. Now, let me see if I've got this straight. You met Katrina Carr through Mark O'Dane. She was one of his girls. Yes, that's right. And you're sure that you never had anything to do with her personally? You were never intimate? I hardly think that's the kind of thing I could forget. With all due respect, Talbot, I think you've forgotten more of them than you remember. Katrina was hooked on drugs. For that reason alone, I could hardly have anything to do with her. I met her in Marco's health club, and that's all right, that. All right, you don't have to be short with me, Talbot. I'm trying to help you. I thought you were anxious to get back to the courtroom. I am, but with a trial in progress, it's a little difficult for you and me to converse there. Now, we know Callison is going to question the Wolick woman in depth, and I want to know what else she's going to reveal on that witness stand. Well, how the hell should I know? The woman's a pathological liar. But believe me, after the DA has finished cutting her down to size, she'll be so discredited no one will believe a word she said. And what if Callison doesn't discredit her? Then I'll take the stand and do it myself. I don't like it, Talbot. You don't like what? I just don't like the smell of this whole business. Now, either there's something that you haven't told me. I have told you everything there is to tell. Talbot, I am an attorney, not a private detective. I am accustomed to being given the facts, not having to root them out. Now, may I remind you that if you are in this mess deeper than you've admitted, the only way that I can help you is for you to tell me everything. And I mean everything. Now, shall we begin again from the top? Oh, uh, never mind. Don't say a word. Good morning, gentlemen. Well, how are you this morning, Captain? Oh, I'm just fine, Mr. Price, just fine. Well, Mr. Huddleston, I was over at your office. They told me I might find you here. What is it now, Captain Hall? I wonder if you'd mind coming down to headquarters with me for a minute. I answered all your questions yesterday. Uh, may I ask what this is about, Captain? Yes, there was a witness to the beating of Katrina Carr. I have already told Wait, you. Just I a minute, don't... Talbot. I, uh, I take it you want to place Mr. Huddleston in a lineup. A lineup? That's about the size of it, yes. Well, Lim, he can't do that, can he? Talbot, we have nothing to fear, and therefore nothing to lose by cooperating. You have a very good attorney, Mr. Huddleston. Thank you. Shall we go? Dive in, Snoopy. Devour those crunchy milk bone biscuits. Dazzling. What's that stupid beagle dreaming about? I have no idea. Milk bone. Give your dog something to smile about. It's Sears Days, and it only happens twice a year. Our lowest prices of the season, like great savings on these Trader Bay Women's Fisherman Sandals. Save $10 in seven colors, perfect for spring. So get to Sears Days. Sale ends April 26th. All across America, we ask families to trade their soap for a breakthrough in family skin care. New moisture care from Ivory in Bar and Body Wash. Could they tell the difference? There's more moisture in my skin. More moisture. You need it out here in the desert. New moisture care from Ivory has special conditioning cleansers that leave skin more moisturized than any soap. Healthier, softer, smoother. Finally, one bar my whole family likes. Try Ivory Moisture Care for a week. Discover the natural glow of healthier skin. It's a whole new kind of ivory. How do you like your Kool-Aid? My Kool-Aid? Red! I like it like that. That's right. When it comes to making Kool-Aid, there's a right way and a better way. Yours. Your it's a family thing. So do your thing, because now there's something new and exciting from Kool-Aid. Try new Mega Mountain Twists in three all-new blended berry flavors. your heart into all you do from the way you love to the things you choose big or small you give your all moms like you choose
Jif's peanuts are deep roasted to bring out more fresh roasted peanut taste, more than any other leading brand. Moms like you choose Jif. Choose Jif. Like Choosy moms choose Jif. I don't know why Marco came to Landview. Oh, come now, Mrs. Wolek. Surely you won't try to tell this court that your arrival in Landview and the arrival of Marco Dane shortly thereafter was nothing more than a wild coincidence. No, well, I guess it wasn't. How shortly after Marco got here did he contact you? A few days. And he didn't tell you anything about why he'd followed you here? It was a long, long time ago. I, I don't really remember. Well, let's try to refresh your memory. Now, when Marco Dane first got here, did he remind you of the fact that it was your testimony that sent him to prison? Yes, he did. And would you say that he felt bitter about that? I guess so. Bitter enough to try to get even with you? Uh, object. Objection sustained. Mrs. Wolek, how often did you see Marco Dane in Landview, I mean? Saw him a few times at Tony's place where I used to work. And did he ever ask you to resume the relationship you had had with him in Colorado? No, he did not. In other words, he was more or less willing to, to forgive the past, let bygones be bygones. Is that right? More or less. Well, j just a moment ago, you admitted that he felt quite bitter about your having sent him to prison. Yeah, well, I guess that was when he, when he first came here. Oh, but after that, he mellowed and you became good friends again. No, we did not become good friends. Well, I'm, I'm getting just a little bit confused, Mrs. Wallach. What exactly was your relationship with Marco Dane here in Landview? We didn't have a relationship of any kind. I see. Now, let's go back for just a moment to something you said earlier on the stand. I am referring now to the night of December 15th, the night Marco Dane was killed. You received a telephone call from Katrina Carr, and according to your testimony, Katrina Carr said to you, something's happened to him, him meaning Marco Dane. Something really big. He's not going to bother anybody anymore. Have I quoted you accurately, Mrs. Woolley? Yes, that's what Katrina Carr said. Fine. Now, the first part of her testimony seemed perfectly clear to me. Something's happened to him, something big. Obviously, she could have been alluding to Marco's death. But what did she mean when she said, he's not going to bother anybody anymore? Marco was in the habit of bothering people. Bothering? How? Oh, uh, I don't know. He'd just say the wrong thing to them. Uh-huh. Could you give us an example of what you mean? Well, uh... I can't. Oh, I, come I, on now, Mrs. Wallach. There must be some example you can give us. Well, he was on an ego trip. He, he was in the habit of putting people down. He liked to put people down, Mrs. Wallach, or kick them when they were already down. I really don't know what you mean. Well, I expect you will soon enough. Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Callison is playing some kind of little cat and mouse game, and quite frankly, I don't find it terribly entertaining. Neither does the court, Mr. Martin. Mr. Callison, I cautioned you earlier not to drag your feet with this witness. Well, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Uh, I've been awaiting some further documents which Miss Keegan has just brought in. May I have a moment? Are you asking for a recess? No, sir. Just a moment. Very well. You have a moment. Thank you, sir. Paul, well, isn't there anything we can do? So far, she's okay. Yes, but you know where Callison is heading, don't you? Yes, I sure know where he's heading. Well, can't you stop him? But the only thing I can do at this point, Vicky, is just to slow him down a little bit. Unless he takes a wrong turn, he could, of course, but I certainly wouldn't hold my breath waiting for that. Muchachos, good news. Improved Huggies Ultra Trim Diapers are here. So let's get happy and mumbo. Brand new grip tabs on Huggies Ultra Trim Grip and Wee Grip as no sticky tape can. And the cover feels soft, like cloth. 
It's the soft way to help stop leaks. Get happy with improved Huggies Ultra Trim. Now with Grip Tabs. Fabuloso. What's that in the sky? It's a flying peanut butter cup. Don't be ridiculous. It's Reese's Crunchy Cookie Cup. He has a peanut butter center, but he packs a delicious cookie crunch. Introducing Reese's Crunchy Cookie Cup, the cup with the cookie crunch. It took Italians to design a shoe with flair and style, but it took Americans to design the perfect corn pad to make them bearable. Dr. Scholl's corn removers with super soft Cushlin gel have our best cushioning protection ever for immediate pain relief. Because what good are great shoes if you can't wear them? As the youngest girl in my family, I grew up with a lot of hand-me-downs. Bernadette Spears, hand-me-down expert. I swore when I had kids, there wouldn't be any tired looking hand-me-downs. My youngest clothes would look as good as my oldest. For me, using a good detergent makes a real big difference. I thought for easier loads, it wouldn't hurt to use a cheaper one. But sometimes, those clothes look older faster. Tide gets out many tough stains better than leading low price brands, and it helps clean away the fuzz that can make cotton clothes look old before their time. Hand-me-downs look good enough to go through all three kids. If it's got to be clean, it's got to be Tide. I think they're kind of cute. I'll keep them for a while. Quaker is pouring on the big news. Quaker Bagged Cereals. A wide variety of delicious cereals in the great flavors your family craves. And you can forget high cereal prices because these Quaker cereals only cost about $2 a bag every day. Count on Quaker for family favorites at prices that are easy to swallow. Quaker Bagged Cereals. Great taste and savings by the bag full. And now try Quaker Honey Nut Oats and Frosted Oats, two new family favorites. There you are. You're getting so big. <laughs> you look just like your father. Hello, Slugger. How are you? Good to see you. My little man. Finally. What? No best foods. There are ordinary sandwiches. Ooh, what a thing. I love this. And then there are extraordinary sandwiches made with the rich, creamy, unmistakable taste of Best Foods Real Mayonnaise. Bring out the best foods and bring out the best. There's Grandma's sweet cheese. This week on All My Children, we fought for our love. Passions ignite. I've wanted you for a long, long time. Tempers explode. What did you do to Haley that night? I'm not afraid of you, Dimitri. And danger waits. Somebody help me, my baby. Oh, my God, Sonia. Watch what happens on All My Children, ABC Daytime. I should remind you of something here, and it's kind of strange. The victim in the Mark O'Dane murder trial isn't really dead. You see, Marco didn't die, but his twin brother, Dr. Mario Corelli, did. When Mario took a fatal bullet, Marco assumed his brother's identity and began playing doctor, even though he didn't know a tourniquet from a turnover. <laughs> Dr. Corelli, are you all right? Uh, yes. Yes, Mrs. Hopkins, I'm fine. I'm all right. Well, when I saw you get up and hurry out of the courtroom, I thought for a minute that, well, you might be sick. In a manner of speaking, I am sick. What's going on in that courtroom is turning my stomach. Yes. All those things they're saying about your brother. It's as if they've got his corpse in there and they're picking the bones clean. Why? I know. Oh, I'm sure it must be very painful for you. I'm not thinking about me, Mrs. Hopkins. I've got nothing to lose. It's the others, the others, who are going to be hurt by this. Mm -hmm. Karen Wolick. And everyone whose life was touched by Marcos. Do you think for one minute that Mrs. Riley was capable of his murder? No, and you know I don't. And yet, she's already been deeply hurt. And Tina. I can't stand to see that kid in the courtroom. What's going to become of her? I don't know. She's a lovely girl. I think you were right the other day when you said that she was one of the few people who could bring out the best in Marco. You know, I remember once, when Marco was sick in our house, he had the flu. And Tina came over to the house, and she brought some chicken soup. Yes, I remember. I mean, uh, he, he wrote me about that. Yeah. Well, I got furious. 
and I gave Marco this lecture, but Marco got furious back and said, Mrs. Hopkins, Tina is one of the people in the world I could never, ever hurt. And I believed him. Yeah. I believe that he had the deepest feelings for that child. Yes, I believe he did. Dr. Crowley, I was just thinking that if Marco were here and could hear all the things that people were saying, it would be bound to prompt him to make great changes. It's nice of you to say that, Mrs. Hopkins. I think we should get back inside. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Mr. Callison, you've had considerably more than a moment. I'm ready to resume cross-examination, Your Honor. Please, proceed. Thank you. Mrs. Wolek, you stated earlier that during your first phone call from Katrina Carr, that you got the impression that she knew how and by whose hand Marco Dane had met his death. Isn't that correct? Yes, that's right. And you stated before that that you and Katrina Carr were not close friends. In fact, you emphasized that you were just casual friends. Is that also correct? Yes. Now, if Katrina Carr did indeed know how and by whose hand Marco Dane was killed, why did she telephone you, a casual friend, rather than a close friend? For that matter, why didn't she call the police? I don't know. I guess it was because she, like I said before, was on, on drugs, and I guess she... You guess that, what? That maybe she felt that the police wouldn't believe her. Because people on drugs are not known for their veracity, are they? Object. Sustained. Mrs. Wolek, do you know what Katrina Carr's relationship was with Marco Dane? I don't know what you mean. Oh, well, obviously you're aware that Katrina Carr knew Marco Dane, hmm? But are you aware of how well she knew him? No, I guess she knew him some, I, I, I assume. You assume? You assume? Isn't it a fact, Mrs. Wolek, that you were well enough acquainted with Katrina Carr to know that she hated and despised Marco Dane? Isn't it a fact, Mrs. Wolek, that you know it was Marco Dane who supplied her with drugs. And isn't it a fact that you know why he supplied her with those drugs? Your Honor, the witness is not on trial here. I mean, Mr. Callison is badgering this poor woman. Now, Mr. Callison, surely you can get to your point in something other than an accusatory tone, huh? Oh, yes, Your Honor. Yes, indeed. Mrs. Wolek, are you aware of what Katrina Carr did for a living? Did you hear the question? Yes. Then would you tell this court, please, what Katrina Carr did for a living? She had various jobs. I'm talking about her primary source of income. Do you know what that was? Very well, Mrs. Wolek. I will present you with a few facts that I have just had verified. Katrina Carr was a common prostitute. And furthermore, furthermore, she was in that capacity directly connected to Marco Dane because it was Dane who procured men for her. Now, do you deny knowing all that? No. Then why did you omit that information when you first took the Because I didn't think it had any bearing on what Katrina said. Oh, I see. Well, I believe the state will be able to show that it has considerably more bearing than you seem to think. But we'll get back to Katrina Carr in just a moment. Right now, I'd like to ask you a few questions about your acquaintance with someone else, namely, Talbot Huddleston. Messy, sticky you. Southern California Watch, Jeopardy! tonight at 7 on ABC7. 
If you ask me, when it comes to suspense and intrigue, nothing beats a good murder trial. I'm Reba McIntyre, and today's Daytime to Remember caused quite a stir when it first aired back in 1979 on One Life to Live. When Karen Woolock took the stand in the Mark O'Dane murder trial, she swore to tell the truth, the whole truth. But Karen prayed that the whole truth about herself would never come out, because if it did, her husband Larry, the people of Landview, and the whole wide world would learn that this housewife was a common hooker. Remember how you just couldn't wait to see what she'd say? Well, yesterday, in the first part of this classic episode, District Attorney Herb Callison savagely cross-examined Karen, who appeared to be on the verge of cracking. I remember when this first aired, I was touring the country in a van and trailer that was breaking down a lot. Luckily for me, it broke down on the day Karen took the stand. So while we were waiting for the van to get fixed, I cozied up to a TV set and watched soap history in the making. Now, Mrs. Wolak, after Katrina Carr's phone call to you that night, from which you concluded that she knew who had killed Mark O'Dane, yes. you said that she turned up missing. Yes. You tried every way you knew how to locate her, but you were unsuccessful. Yes, that's right. Would you tell the court it just what means you used in trying to locate Katrina? I called um, several people. I went to various places. What sort of places? First, I went to her ho hotel where she was living, and I found out that she had moved. And where else did you look? Um, various b bars where she had hung out. I see. <clears throat> now. You testified earlier that you and this person, this prostitute, were only casually acquainted. Um, and yet, you're telling us now that you knew her various hangouts. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, counsel's implications are clearly out of order here. Objection sustained. The jury will ignore Mr. Callison's last remarks. Mrs. Wolek. After you received that phone call from Katrina Carr, did you tell anybody about it? Yes, I told Talbot Huddleston. Isn't it true that you and your husband are good friends of the defendant, Victoria Lord Riley? Yes, that's true. Now, when the defendant was indicted, didn't you feel it incumbent upon yourself to tell your husband about that phone call? Yes. yes. Then. Why didn't you? I, I don't know. I, I guess I thought that... You thought, you thought he might wonder how you happened to be acquainted with a prostitute. Yes, I, I guess so. All right, but there were other people you could have told, weren't there? Or did you refrain from telling them for the same reason? Yes, I, I guess I did. Well, then that brings us to the question of why you were willing to tell Talbot Huddleston, doesn't it? Why did you turn to Talbot Huddleston? I told Mr. Huddleston because I uh, couldn't find Katrina, and I was very frustrated that I couldn't find her. I knew she had some information, and, and I didn't have any financial means, and I, I knew that, that he could hire a private investigator, so I worked for him, and I, and I went to him, and I told him the story. Oh, yes, 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 that's right. Um, what, what just, just what is it that you did for the Huddleston firm, Mrs. Wallach? I modeled dresses. And how long did you model dresses for the Huddleston firm? <laughs> I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I guess it was several months. Yeah. Then perhaps you could explain to this court why no one at the Huddleston firm remembers your ever having worked for them. Why no one there has ever heard of you. And while you're at it, Mrs. Wolek, perhaps you will also explain why since the time you came to Landview up until now, there is absolutely no record in the Huddleston Company files of your ever having been employed by them.
The court is waiting for your explanation. It's true. It's true. I never worked for the Huddleston Company. In other words, but you I... lied to this court. And I submit that if you could lie about one thing, you would be lying about everything else. In fact, your testimony could be one long tissue uh, of lies. No, it's not true. It's not true. Katrina came to me. She told me she knew who killed Margaret. She told me it was Salvin Huddleston. Vicki Riley didn't kill Margaret. She couldn't kill anybody. Please, you've got to believe me. It was Salvin, Salvin Huddleston. Order. Order in this court. Your Honor, Mr. Callison has thoroughly succeeded in, in placing the witness, putting her through a great emotional stream. On the contrary, the witness, with some assistance, has put herself in this position. Had she been a truthful witness, this might never have happened. Gentlemen, I have warned both of you repeatedly about this kind of behavior. I am declaring this court in recess for one hour. I would like to see both of you in my chambers. All rise. Karen, darling, why did you do it? You shouldn't have. You shouldn't have. It's spring, so it's Sears Days, when we dig down for the lowest prices on our top brand names. It's your time to bloom, our time to shine, and it only happens twice a year. For three days only, all paint's on sale. Interior, exterior, great brand names like Easy Living, Dutch Boy, and Weatherbeater. Save on House Shield Flat and Easy Hide Flat. Half price, just $4.88. No one can help you create a new look like we can. So get to Sears Days today. Spring, there's nothing like it. Sears Days ends April 26th. I use my hands to speak to the world, so when I have a wart, I can't hide it. But Dr. Scholl's Clear Away can. Its medicated discs dissolve warts fast, and this cover-up conceals as it heals. Clear Away Wart Remover from Dr. Scholl's. To be a man in my country, I must fight a bull. Yet I cannot fight a tiger. Brave adults confront their uncontrollable desire for Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Sure, I could wander to other cereals. But I get all the shame and embarrassment I need right here. Those sweet flakes in a bowl of milk. Is it any wonder it's the cat's meow? Once, our six-year-old grandson walked in on us. He said all the slurping woke him up. Frosted flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great! I do ribs like nobody else. Bo Gardner, barbecue caterer. My sauce is something special. But it's messy. There's no way I can show up at a party with dirty linens. I've tried a lot of things. Tough stains need something special. Tide with bleach has a special ingredient you can actually see that makes it unbeatable on tough stains compared to other leading detergents with bleach. And it helps keep colors bright. Perfect every time. If it's got to be clean, it's got to be Tide. You've got to have the right ingredients. Then everything comes out just right. Why do Hershey's Kisses have little flags on top? It makes them more charming. Little Hershey's Kisses, big chocolate taste. And Mrs. Wolek, I know this has been an arduous experience for you, but I'm afraid there has been no real clarification on the three major questions on which I've been questioning you, namely, why Katrina Carr called you on December 15th that night, why you later called Talbot Huddleston regarding Katrina as opposed to someone with whom you were more closely acquainted, and finally, but most importantly, your relationship with the deceased Mark O'Dane after he arrived in Landview. Your Honor, it seems to me that learned counsel has covered all three of these areas more than adequately, and it certainly is not going to profit anybody in the courtroom please, for him to go over. Your Honor, I believe this witness's testimony simply cannot be left dangling. She has seriously impugned the reputation of a respected member of this community. The court is in agreement, Mr. Callison. You may continue your cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Now then, Mrs. Wallach, I would like to begin by disposing of the Huddleston matter once and for all. Now, just prior to the recess, you stated that Talbot Huddleston killed Mark O'Day. Now, I think I can safely assume that you don't 
have any incontrovertible evidence for, with which to support that charge, or surely you would have presented it to us. Yes? Only Katrina Carr could prove that. But unfortunately, Katrina Carr is lying comatose in Landview Hospital and is therefore unable to do that. Am I right? Yes, you are right. Well then, perhaps you could tell us why you think Talbot Huddleston killed Mark O'Dane. I don't know what reason he may have had. Oh. Well, was he acquainted with Marco? Yes. How do you know that? I saw him several time at, times at Marco's health club. I see. You were in the habit of going to the health club, were you? No, I was not in the habit of going to the health club. I happened to see him there. What, were you a uh, member of the health club? No! Well, that was a rather emphatic no. If you weren't a member, why did you go there? Now, uh, Mrs. Wolak, you did state earlier that you and Marco Dane were not on close terms, did you not? Yes. Mm-hmm. Then what earthly reason would you have for going to his health club? He... He called me. I went, I, uh, I went there a couple of times. He called you about what? I don't know. It was a long time ago. I don't remember. Oh, well, surely you must remember something. I mean, I, I, I'm a man like that. This is a man who was an important part of your past, a man who followed you all the way to Landview. Now, I would think that if he asked you to come and see you about something, something in his office, you wouldn't easily forget what that something was. Marco had a sadistic streak. He uh, enjoyed reminding me about the past. Reminding you? How? He would... Um... He said he was never going to let me forget it. I think you can be a little more specific than that. In fact, isn't it true that Marco Dane was blackmailing you? No. I must remind you that you are under oath, Mrs. Wallach. Now, can you swear before this court that after you got married to Dr. Wallach, Marco Dane never once threatened you, never once threatened to go to your husband and tell him about your past. All right, yes, he threatened to go to my husband. And how did you respond to those threats? I begged... Excuse me. I begged him not to go to left. No, no, no. Did, did you pay him to keep... No, I did not pay him. I didn't have the financial means to I pay did, him. And how did he respond to the fact that you refused to be blackmailed by him? He was very angry, but he never did go to my husband. Oh, in other words... He took pity on you, and out of the goodness of his heart, he left you off the hook. I don't know what was going on in his mind. I just know that he didn't go to my husband. Well, I beg to differ with you, Mrs. Wolek, but the state finds it difficult to believe that a man like Marco Dane, a man who came to Landview with the express purpose of getting even with someone, would suddenly find it in his heart to let that someone off the hook. As a matter of fact, I believe a man like Marco Dane would find a way to put that person on the hook, so to speak. Now, Mrs. Wolek, did you ever have occasion to meet with Marco Dane at places other than the health club? I told you before I saw him. Uh, several times he came into Tony's place. Uh-huh. Any other places? Well, yes, I may have seen him walking down, downtown on the street. What about the Wallington Hotel? What? Oh, God, I can't watch this. Easy. Can an antibacterial body wash still be gentle? Well, this one is. New Blue Soft Soap Body Wash. The only body wash that combines an antibacterial formula with moisture beads. Washes away germs, but doesn't dry. Leaves skin soft, but not greasy. So dads love it. Moms love it. Even kids love it. New Blue Soft Soap Gentle Antibacterial Body Wash. Wash away the germs, not the softness. Pardon me, would you have any Grey Poupon Honey Mustard? Grey Poupon Honey Mustard? Dear boy, I'm afraid there's no such thing. Oh, but there is. Is not. Is too. Is not. Is too. Is not. Is too. Is not. Is too. Is not. Apparently, is not everyone's heard about Grey Poupon Honey Mustard. Perfect for everything from a chicken dish to a turkey sandwich. Your chauffeur wears combat boots. Does not. Does do. Grey Poupon Honey Mustard. <laughs>
Thus, the fresh maker. For aches and pains, I take Tylenol. For fever, I take Tylenol. For headaches, I take Excedrin. Why do I do that? Because Excedrin relieves headaches better than Tylenol. How do I know? Was I convinced by all their clinical research? No, of course not. Of course not, I'm not convinced by charts and graphs, are you? I'm convinced when my headaches go away. Excedrin, the headache medicine, also available in gel tabs. Does your tissue leave you with a problem on your hands? He blows his nose, he goes right through the tissue, and his hands get all wet. And so is the ball in everyone, everyone else's hands. And that's why there's Puff's Advanced Extra Strength, the tissue that keeps hands cleaner and drier than regular tissue. Drier is definitely better. Puff's Advanced is 60% thicker. Thicker? They really are soft. This should protect their hands, and I'll protect the azaleas. Puff's Advanced Extra Strength, the best ones to protect your loved ones. This week on All My Children, we fought for our love. Passions ignite. I've wanted you for a long, long time. Tempers explode. What did you do to Haley that night? I'm not afraid of you, Dimitri. And danger waits. Somebody help me, my baby. Oh, my God, Sonia. Watch what happens on All My Children, ABC Daytime. Boy, I would never want to have D.A. Callison grilling me on the witness stand. That guy's Johnny Cochran, F. Lee Bailey, and a pit bull all rolled into one. And if Vicky's lawyer looks strangely familiar, well, that's because he's Paul Martin from All My Children, who came over from Pine Valley to defend Vicky in the trial of the year. You know, I always rooted for Karen Wallach, but everybody did. Funny thing is, they tell me that Judith Light, when she started playing Karen, was expecting folks to hit her when they saw her on the street. Just the opposite. She did such a wonderful job of making people understand why Karen did what she did, that folks would come up to her and put their arms around her and want to comfort her. For all her faults, Karen remains one of One Life to Live's most cherished characters. Hey, let's go back to the court. Hang on, girl, don't crack. Yes, Mrs. Wolek, the Wallington Hotel. Did you ever have occasion to meet Marco Dane there? I... Uh... I don't really, really know. You don't really know? When it suits you, Mrs. Wallach, there's a great deal that you don't really know. Objection, Your Honor. Objection sustained. Will you get on with it, Counselor? Mm -hmm. Very well, Your Honor. I will get on with it because I, too, believe that it's time the truth came out as to why this witness took the stand in the first place. Now then, Mrs. Wallach, you mentioned earlier that when you were looking for Katrina Carr, you first tried to reach her at her hotel, is that right? Yes, that's right. What was the name of that hotel? The Wallington Hotel. We didn't hear you. What was that name? Would you speak up, please? The Wallington Hotel. Thank you. Now, I have here a police emergency report dated February 17, 1978. This report states that on said night, you were the victim of an assault in the alleyway behind the River Rat Bar. Do you recall that incident? Yes, I do. The report goes on to say that you stated it was an attempted rape. Yet when the police wished to question you further in order to pursue this matter, you told them that you simply wanted to drop the whole thing. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Why, Mrs. Wolek? Didn't you want to see justice done? Yes, I wanted to see justice done. It was, it was a very traumatic experience for me. I wanted to forget all about it. Well, I'm sure it was a very traumatic experience. But was it really an attempted rape? You've got the police report right there. Yes. Yes, indeed I do. Mrs. Wallach, does the name Aldo Pearson mean anything to you? You obviously know that it does. And what about the following names? Roy Gladstone, Joel Diamond, Slim Jenkins, Bob Williams. You needn't go on, Mr. Callison. You have been acquainted with all of these men, haven't you? 
You obviously know that I have. I don't see why you have any reason to ask. I have a reason to ask because I believe the court and the jury has the right to know why you felt compelled to take the stand in defense of Victoria Riley and what your real relationship was with Marco Dane. Now, I could go on and on and on and on asking you questions, Mrs. Wolek, but it would make it a lot easier for everybody concerned if you would stop lying to this court. I am not lying. I came here to see justice done. Vicki Riley didn't kill anybody. Why can't you understand that? The innocence or guilt of Mrs. Riley will be determined by this jury, but not until they have been given all the facts. Now, isn't it a fact? that there was a great deal more to your relationship with Marco Dane than you have admitted. Yes, 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 yes! All right, Mrs. Wolek. Will you now tell the court what that relationship was and what it had to do with Mrs. Riley, or shall I do it? <laughs> There is no need for you to do that, Mr. Callison. I will, I will tell them. It is true. You are right. Marco Dane was blackmailing me. But not because of what he knew about your past. No, not because of what he knew about my past. He learned that I was, I was. You were what, Mrs. Wolek? I was, I was soliciting men. You see, when I came to Landview, I was very lonely and very frightened. And I didn't know what I was doing, and I had made up my mind to stop. But Marco had found out what I was doing. And he threatened to go to my husband and tell him about my past with him in Denver. And I... He wouldn't let me stop. I begged him. I asked him to please let me stop. But you had become a valuable source of income to him, hadn't you? How? How much more do you do you want, Mr. Gallagher? Haven't I said what everyone wants to hear? What you want everyone to hear? That I am a common hooker like Katrina Carr. That Marco Dane was my pimp. Is that what you want me to say? What do you want from me? You want blood? You want me to say that I'm lower than the lowest piece of scum? You want more filth? You want more slime? You want more names? I'll give you another name, Calvin. Huddleston! He was my first John. He was the first in a string of so many men I don't even remember their names. <laughs> no! No! Are you satisfied? <laughs> The folks at KFC, inspired by the mighty buffalo wing, have taken it one step further and gotten rid of the wing. Behold the mighty buffalo crispy strip, new from KFC. Boneless all-white meat chicken, marinated in those classic buffalo spices. Proof that you don't need wings to have a meal that'll fly. Everybody needs a little KFC. Now try three new buffalo crispy strips with ranch dressing, two sides, and a biscuit, just $2.99. You put your heart into all you do From the way you love to the things you choose Big or small, you give your all Moms like you 
Jif's peanuts are deep roasted to bring out more fresh roasted peanut taste more than any other leading brand. Moms like you choose Jif. Choose Choosy moms choose Jif. 1892, toothpaste is invented. 1955, fluoride. 1985, tartar control. Now, tartar control toothpaste from Listerine that keeps fighting germs for a long-lasting clean. Introducing Cool Mint Listerine Tartar Control Toothpaste. Its germ-killing formula keeps fighting germs even after you stop brushing so that clean feeling lasts. Finally, new Cool Mint Listerine Tartar Control Toothpaste. Strong on germs, long on clean. Some thoughts on, should I sleep with it or not? This is a big question. I mean, how long can you really wear a tampon? Overnight? On uh, all night. The whole night? A group of leading gynecologists agree that you can wear a tampon overnight for up to eight hours. This, this is good news. And nothing protects better than a Tampax tampon. During the day? Or at night. They're very smart, those gynecologists. Tampax. Overnight. Because it's okay. Sweet dreams. Good night. Tampax. Women know. All across America, we ask families to trade their soap for a breakthrough in family skin care. New moisture care from Ivory and Bar and Body Wash. Could they tell the difference? There's more moisture in my skin. More moisture. You need it out here in the desert. New moisture care from Ivory has special conditioning cleansers that leave skin more moisturized than any soap. Healthier, softer, smoother. Finally, one bar my whole family likes. Try Ivory Moisture Care for a week. Discover the natural glow of healthier skin. It's a whole new kind of ivory. It's no wonder Judith Light won back-to-back -back Emmys as outstanding lead actress in 80 and 81. She's incredible. As for the trial, let me tell you how it all turned out. Thanks to Karen's testimony, Vicki was set free. <laughs> and Talbot Huddleston was sent to the slammer for murdering Mark O'Dane, or should I say his brother Mario. And if you didn't remember, Larry walked out on his wife after her confession. But darn if they didn't get back together for three more stormy years of marriage. Tomorrow, wait till you see what Marco and Karen were up to a few months later. It's the notorious baby switch. So get ready, and why not call the friend you watched it with back in 1982 and share this daytime to remember all over again. See you tomorrow. This is Joan London. And Charles Gibson. Tomorrow, how to make sure the learning process continues when other people care for your child. Parenting, the first years last forever on tomorrow's Good Morning America. What surprise does Adam have waiting for Liza on their morning after? Watch what happens on All My Children today.